Amen, amen. Well, I mean, who's excited for the week two of the book of James? Anybody excited for week two, the book of James? Man, I tell you what, I love going through uh, the scriptures verse by verse um, because I don't have to work hard uh, to really put these talks together because the, the Bible does all the talking, so I don't have to do, uh, sometimes when we do like topical series, I mean, I got to work hard to find points and make sure it makes sense and make sure we're hearing from God and it's biblically correct. But today, uh, I don't, uh, in this series, we don't have to work hard at all because literally the Bible does the talking. And I love that we get to do that and hear from the word of the Lord. And so we've been going through the book of James and the book of James is a, uh, a book where it's written by the brother of Jesus and he was writing writing to a group of people who were who were scattered around the entire world. In fact, these people uh, were living in Jerusalem, and God had called them to make a difference in Jerusalem. Like God wanted to use them in Jerusalem, but there was one one problem that they faced. Life happened, and we know how sometimes God can have a plan for our lives, and God can have certain goals and callings on our lives. But life happens, and sometimes our reaction to life is not the reaction that God wants to have. And so, and so James starts off his letter by saying, "Hey guys, make sure you know that the trials and the persecutions that you are walking through are not sent by God, but they are allowed by God, and they are there to make you stronger and to make you a greater person." And so we no longer do we react to trials and persecution as something that we run away from. But in fact, we embrace them because it's the very trials that we're running away from that God wants to use to propel us into the next season of our lives. And so James uh, begins to start off his letter by writing to these people who have ran away from their calling, who have ran away from Jerusalem, and now they are scattered amongst all the nations. And so now the, James is writing his letter to these people, these Christians, and I want to start off by reading a few, path, a few scriptures today, starting in chapter 1. We'll start in uh, in verse 19, and we'll go a few verses and see what God says to us. It says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone, everybody say everyone, Everyone. should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Come on, that'll preach by itself. Ain't Ain't that right? Come on, that'll preach by yourself. Stop talking, all right? Just listen to somebody. Come on, Travis Jones. I'm talking to myself up here. Uh, It says in verse 20, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Uh, Next verse, it says, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and filth and evil that is so prevalent and, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. And I love this one verse right here. This is like one of my life verses right here. Uh, if I, uh, I don't get tattoos because you can barely see them on me because I'm so dark. But if I did get a tattoo, uh, if I did have more tattoos, it would be this verse right here. Don't just merely listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Do what it says. I'm going to repeat that again, right? Can you go back? Don't, don't run back from that verse real quick. It says, do not just listen to the word. Don't just listen to it. And because if you just listen to it, You might deceive yourselves, but he's saying in order for you to get the word of God in you and not deceive yourselves, you got to get busy. You got to get in the game and do what it says. Next verse. And and then it says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do it, uh, what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Like it says, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting uh, what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. If I would have a title for today's message, it would simply be get in the game, get in the game. Uh, So I I grew up playing sports. Oftentimes I'm, I'm a sports guy. And uh, I tell this story often. Uh, when I was in the ninth grade, I went to a district uh, track meet. And this track meet was a, uh, a time where um, they had boosted up the JV, the junior varsity, up to the varsity, a few of us, so that we could 
um, uh, get an experience for next year. So maybe in my sophomore year, maybe I might make it to the varsity team or my track team. But they just wanted us to get exposure to these uh, certain uh, track meets. And so we're at the district championships in Miami, Florida. And I remember my coach, Coach Knight, boosted me up. And we're, we're watching. I'm, I'm going just to, to figure out what's going on. And so I'm, uh, we're at this field called Tropical Park, and it's the district championships. And literally, as we're getting off the bus uh, to watch this, I'm hanging out with the other JV people, so we're not running the race. We have our track outfits on, so our jumpsuits on because we're not running. And as soon as we get off the bus, the athletic director comes to our coach and says, hey, the senior that was running the hurdles on that day cannot run because he didn't have a 2.5 GPA, so therefore he doesn't qualify to run in the uh, the, the track meet, but I didn't really, it didn't matter to me because there were two other people that was in front of me. There was a, one was a junior and one was a sophomore. So I had no ills because there were two other people that would run my particular event much better than me, faster than me. So anyway, so we are running, uh, we are, um, we're, we're getting ready, we're warming up and all that stuff, and I'm excited. The lights are on. It's at night, Friday night, when the crowds are starting to fill in the bleachers, and we're getting excited. And as we are warming up, the two people that are in front of me pulls a hamstring and one pulls a calf muscle. And so coach looks at me and says, Trap, Jones, you're up. I said, Coach, I can't do it, Coach. You got the wrong person. You got the wrong person. I'm in ninth grade. I came here to watch this and learn for next year. So, Coach, I can't do it. And, and Coach kept saying, Jones, get in the blocks. And the blocks were these instruments that, that, that would be used to have certain, le- um, a me- uh, certain leverage so that you could start your way strong, your race strong. And so he kept saying, Jones, get in the blocks. Jones, get in the blocks. And I said, Coach, I can't do it. I am not ready for this. I can't do it. Like, I didn't even get ready that morning. Like, honestly, I didn't even put lotion on my knees that, that day because I wasn't supposed to take off my jumpsuit. I was supposed to be wearing a jumpsuit the entire time. So my knees were ashy. I wasn't ready. I wasn't warmed up. I mentally wasn't prepared. Coach said, Jones, get in the blocks. So literally, I get in the blocks, and we start this race. The guy says, on your mark, get set on, literally, as right before the gun goes off, everybody falls start. So we get up, and we jump up, and we get ready again. And the guy says again, on your mark, get set. And again, everyone falls started. So in Florida, the rules were, if you fall started two times, you were disqualified. So literally, everyone was disqualified but me. So guess who won that race? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hey, I was so excited. I was so pumped. And I, I mean, I used to saw me, you guys should have saw me running that race by myself. <laughs> I'm telling you, but I ran that race hard. You know, the crazy part is that, you know, the summer before, the summer before I had started working on hurdles. I was working real hard. I had learned all how to do the three steps in between the hurdles. I've learned how to do the one thir- the 330 hurdles. I learned how to how to have certain amount of steps in between the hurdles. And I was ready for it. I was trained for it. But in that moment, I didn't want to get in the, the blocks. I didn't want to get in the game. And I believe that James is talking to us. And James is saying, I have prepared you for greatness. God has prepared you to walk in your freedom to walk in your calling, to walk into the place that God wants you to be. But sometimes life may convince you that you're not qualified enough, that you're not ready enough. But God says, I want you to get in the blocks this morning. Come on, I'm I'm fired up this morning, guys. I'm fired up. I'm ready to roll this morning. You better pass me a Gatorade up here to slow me down. So literally, so we're, 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 uh, uh, we're hearing this letter, and so James is writing to these people who have ran away from the game because the game got real hard, and, and, and the opposition got hard, and sometimes in life, we can run away from the very thing that God wants to build us up so that we can be the ultimate racer that he's called us to be. He's called us to run this race. He's called us to do something great in life, and life has the ability to convince you that you're not good enough. And so he says to them, he starts off in this particular passage that we're looking at. He says, hey, make sure you know that I need you to do me a favor. I need you to be quick to listen. And so me growing up reading that scripture, I always thought that was like James telling us to have manners. Right. So whenever you're in certain environments, make sure that you listen to people. Don't be a big talker like me. Sometimes in my marriage, like sometimes I just want to give Brittany the solution, give her the the solution to the problem instead of me just listening to the problem, Travis. 
Sometimes she just wants me to hear her out. Sometimes the very, the very, the greatest advice I can give my wife is just to listen to her, right? So that's just like proper manners. And I always thought that this is what James was talking about, but really that's not what he's talking about. In fact, sometimes whenever you read scriptures, you got to read like the whole passage or sometimes even the whole Bible to get what a previous verse, a previous verse really means. And it's this thing called hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the science of interpreting scripture. And a great hermeneutical practice is this, that you got to read the whole book and then go back and read it again because therefore you have context of certain verses. And so now we see it says, dear brothers, I want you to be, I want you to take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak. And what he's saying in that moment is that I want you to be quick to listen and I always thought, listen to people, but really, in context, what James is saying, I want you to be quick to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because if you go down in a couple of verses, it says this, don't just merely listen to the what? The word. Don't just merely listen to the word, but, but do what it says. So really, what he's saying in that moment is that I want you to be quick to listen to God's word. And so you think about where these people are at and the season in which this letter is being, the people that this letter has been addressed to, uh, these were people who were literally far from their calling. They were running away because of persecution of that time in Jerusalem. And so the government of that time, the Roman government of that time, were killing Christians left and right. They were far, far from their calling. And so, and so James tells him to say, I want you to do me a favor. Stop listening to all the voices that you're hearing in culture. Stop listening to the government. Stop listening to all these things, these voices of your friends or whatever. I want you to do me a favor. Be quick to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because it's in those moments when you listen to God's voice and you hear God's voice, it changes everything about your life. Right. And so what he's saying is, is in this moment, we have to be people who understand and listen to the word of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit. We've got to be quick to listen to God's voice, because it's in the listening that we're able to do exactly what we're called to do. So the other day I was hanging out and I was thinking about this sermon today and uh, I was watching this commercial and I saw that this one particular athlete, he had like these headphones similar to this and he, he had them on and as he was going through them, he was, um, he had them on and literally there uh, crowds were screaming at him, yelling at him and he couldn't hear anything the crowds were doing because he had these headphones on. If I can get this right. There we go. There we go. So literally, I can't hear nothing. Y'all can amen me all you want. Literally, I can't hear nothing right now. I did hear that amen. I did hear it. <laughs> Love you, babe. Love you, B. Love you. So anyways, so these are made to block out any other voice and only hear what this is plugged into. And so the crazy part is that what James is telling them is that I want you to do me a favor. I want you to learn how to block out the voices that's in your head, block out the voices in culture, and I want you to become an expert of listening to the Holy Spirit. Because if you become an expert of listening to the Holy Spirit, you become somebody who is able to walk in the calling that God has for your life. Now, I'm going to give you an insight. John, can you come up here real quick? Hey, come on, I'm going to take this off because I literally can't hear. I want you to do me a favor, John. I'm going to give you guys an insight to what these guys listen to every single time they get up and worship. You guys hear, don't he sound good when he's saying, don't we give him a hand clap, don't he sound good? Man, you sound good, John. I love it. So, like, they have these earphones in. All the music, all the musicians and all the singers up here, y'all see these, those ear things they got in their ear? So, literally, they can't hear what we hear. They hear something else. And so, I always thought, like, what are they listening to in there? So, one day, I'll put those things on, and here is what they listen to. Can you play it, John, for me? Two. One. Two. Three. Four. Y'all hear that? That's what they hear when they're singing songs. Isn't that crazy? Like, who is that lady? What's her name, John? Verse. So now they're saying, now she's saying, go to the verse. 
I would not, not know what to do with all that. Dot, dot. So we're still in the verse, right? And so she's going to tell us what to do next, right? What's she going to do? Tell us to do something. Tell her to talk. Come on, I want to hear the voice, John. Chorus. There we go. All right, John, y'all give him a hand clap. Y'all give him a hand clap. Interlude. You know, I always thought, like, they're just up here. They're just talented. I mean, they don't need nothing or whatever, but they hear, they got this voice in their ear telling them, hey, it's time to go to the verse. It's time to go to the chorus. It's time to go up here. But we don't see them. And sometimes we look at great people like James, men of, men of, and women of God that we see in the scriptures, and we see the outside, but we don't hear the voice that they're listening to. And sometimes in life, like God is calling us to cancel out all the other voices and put on the headphones of God and hear God's voice. Because in that season, all they heard from culture was that you ran away from your calling. You've made too many mistakes. You can never walk in your calling. You're not good enough. I mean, you're, you made too many mistakes. That, that marriage, that ex-marriage, you, you've been divorced. You can never get remarried again. You, you have too many kids outside of marriage. You, you're not good enough. And, and, and God begins to, like the enemy and Satan and this culture begins to speak all these voices in your ear. And James says, I don't want you to take away the voices and be quick to listen to the voice of God. Because it's when you hear God's voice, it's God that's saying that you are more than enough. That greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It's God that says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It's God that says that I'm going to forgive you in all moments. That's God. So God, so James is writing this letter and says, hey, I got you. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to be quick to listen to the voice of God. Because it's God's voice that outweighs the voices of this world. And some of you have been hearing the voices in your head. And some of you may not be literal voices or audible voices, but you know the voices that have been speaking to you, negativity, about your family, about your future, about your job, about your finances, about all those things. And, and sometimes we hear these voices, and, and James is saying, I need you to do me a favor. Be quick to listen. So really, in, in essence, what he's saying, I need you all to be quick to hear God's voice in his word and in prayer. Amen. You got to be quick, right? And so, like, the sin of the Old Testament, I love what Priscilla Shower says, the sin of the Old Testament is that the people of God, they rejected the voice of their father. The sin of the New Testament is that the people of God rejected the voice of their Savior in Jesus. And I believe that the sin of our time is that we reject the voice of the Holy Spirit. We literally reject his voice. And God says, whenever you're walking out your calling, whenever you're about to run this waste that God has called you to do, I want you to block out the voices, even the voices in your head, Travis, that you're not good enough, that you're a freshman, that you got to run against these seniors who are much bigger and faster and stronger. You got to block out those voices and says, and the voice of God will always tell you to get in the blocks, start the race, and allow me to take care of the rest. That's the voice of God. And so literally, so he goes on by saying, hey, not only do I want you to get the word in you, but then he begins to say this. I want you to be slow to speak. Slow to speak. So not only are we to listen, but we are to speak it. And so literally he uses this verb, says slow to speak, meaning this. I want you to be careful what comes out your mouth. Make sure what comes out your mouth is what you've heard from the God's voice. Because sometimes in life, like we can get caught up in trials and tribulations and what comes out of our mouth is not like God's word, but it's complaining. It's, it's nagging. It's, oh my goodness, can't believe I'm doing this again. Can you imagine the people that, were, that James was writing to? Oh God, I, I, start, I tried to follow you, God. I was in Jerusalem. I was worshiping you. I was going to church. I even signed up for growth track, God. I even start serving on the, on, on, in the greeter team, God. I even was wiping some dirty diapers and kids ministry, God. But then all this stuff came. And I had to run away, Lord. Oh, it's your fault, God. You allowed it to happen. Well, God, it, but no, that's not what James telling them to do. I want you to be slow, quick to listen to God's voice and slow to speak whatever words that he's giving you. Because the word of God, once it's in you, when you listen to the word of God, it becomes in you. But when you speak the word of God, it becomes planted in you. 
It becomes more than something that you just hear, but it becomes something that you speak. And I, that's why I'm a huge fan of us repeating the word of God out loud. That's why I, I make my kids, man, you got to repeat that word because you can hear the word, but you got to speak the word in situations where you need it. And so whenever you're facing situations when it seems like it's impossible, the odds are against you, you can speak Romans 8.28. You can speak it, literally. You can speak it. So you're not going to say, oh, man, I can't believe I can't. There's no way it can happen. There's no way my marriage can overcome this one. There's no way my kids can overcome this. There's no way she'll ever get saved. There's no way he'll ever get saved. There's no way his life will ever turn around. No, I'm not going to say that. Well, I am going to say that God works all things together for the good of those who love the Lord. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that I can do all things through Christ because he's he in me that strengthens me. That's what I'm going to say. And so God says, and so, so James says, I need you to be quick to listen, slow to speak. And when you speak, make sure it's powerful. Let's go to this one verse uh, found uh, in this. I love what James 126 says. It says, those who consider themselves religious and yet not do, not, not keep tight, ring on their tongue, deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless wow so james is saying not only are you to be slow to speak this make sure but whenever it comes out your mouth make sure that you keep a tight ring on your tongue make sure you control exactly everything that comes out your mouth or not only on your mouth but also on your facebook or instagram feed come on come on i'm preaching somebody i'm preaching i think i hit a nerve right there somebody said ouch if you said ouch it's for you come on somebody he says, so, so make sure you have a tight rein on it because make sure that whenever it comes out, it's great. I love what this one verse says in Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 12. And this is powerful, man. This changed my life a few years ago. It says, Jesus said, this is Jesus talking. He says, but I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be <laughs> condemned. Man, isn't that powerful? Like, isn't that crazy? That, like, literally what Jesus is saying, that every word that comes out your mouth, God is going to justify. God's going to look at it. And I'm not trying to give some, give, throw condemnation on you. I think that God's grace is on it, and you could have said some things, or you will say some things that's not right. But what I am saying is that God's going to have to take account for every word we say. And so in moments of like the people of James were, and they were walking through trials and tribulations and when they were pursuing their calling and their destiny in their lives, we got to be sure that we are slow to speak and whenever we speak, let's just make sure that it's positive. And that's why I'm so, I'm a huge fan of just speaking life into situations. Don't speak death. You ever been around somebody who's just a negative Nancy? Anybody got negative Nancys in their lives? Like negative Nancys, like my goodness, why, like why, why do you got to be negative all the time? Oh, it's never going to work out. Oh, I can't believe this country. The country's falling apart. Oh, my goodness. President Trump. Oh, my God. I'm going to get evicted from my house because of President Trump. Oh, my gosh. The prices of the dollar million is going to go up because of President Trump. Like, just, just negative. Like, like, speak life over your life. Like, I know we got issues. I'm not saying avoid the issues of our society. I'm not saying for you to walk away from the issues. But what I am saying for you is to speak life in the middle of your issues, right? we got to speak life. So my last point is this. Not only are we to listen, not only are we to speak, but James says we are to do. And I love this part uh, because James says, hey, because the word of God, when you hear the word of God, it's in you. And when you speak the word of God, it's planted in you. But when you walk out the word of God, it's all over your life. Like, and God wants you to live out the word of God. And so these are the people, this is, this is James. And I want to read this one other scripture uh, that's also found in the book of James. I'm going to read, we're going to, next week, we're going to look at chapter one, chapter two, the first few verses of chapter two. Uh, but today I want to skip that and go to another passage within James in chapter two that really kind of highlights this particular point. Um, it's found in James chapter two. Um, you can go to that on the screen for me. Um, James chapter two, is that not on there? I have it. Here we go. It says, uh, what does it profit, my brother, if someone says that he has faith but does not have any works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked or destitute of, of, of daily food, right, it says, and, he, and the one of you says to them, depart in peace and be warm and filled, but do not give them the things uh, which they are needed for their body, what does that profit? Thus, 
Also, faith by itself does, and, and does not have any works is absolutely dead. Verse 18 says this, but someone will say to you, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith with my works. So what he's saying is that, hey, make sure not only you just listen to the word, not only do you speak the word, but you do the word. Because if you don't do the word, it's like the word that you heard already is like it's dead. And the, and the, and the way that you kind of uh, activate the word of God is, is that you do something about it. I remember when I was a kid, I had my first, first uh, uh, credit card. And my first credit card, it was like you know, one, of my, one of the greatest moments of my life. I had a, a job at Winn-Dixie. I was in the ninth grade. And um, I, had my, I got my first check. And my mom took me to the store. Uh, to the, the bank, they're going to get my first card. Okay, I guess it wasn't a credit card. It's a debit card. So we cast it. I went to the, the lady, and the lady gave me this card, and that this program for younger people, like the junior card program. And it was like, kind of like, there was like a little platinum piece. And in and th- and those days, like, platinum was a big deal. Like, if you got like a platinum card, you have made it in life. So I remember hanging out with my friends, and we went to J.C. Penney's. Like, back in the days, J.C. Penney's was, like, the store to go to. It was, like, the Nordstrom of today. It was, like, awesome. Like, crazy expensive. I remember hanging out with my friends in the mall, Cutler Ridge Mall. We're going to J.C. Penney's, and, and I had my car. First time, never used it before. So, like, I'm getting a couple of Nike outfits. Like, put that in the cart. Get that. No big deal. I got a car. Hanging out with my friends. No big I got this, bro. Go to the, go to the register. Here you go, ma'am. Here's my car. Lady hands back, hands the car back to me. And it's like, hey, the car's not working. I'm like, man, there's money in there. I, I put money in there. I got money in the bank. Okay, swipe it again. All right, lady, go ahead. Come back, Mr. Jones. Your, your car's not working, man. Can you try it one more time, please? Mr. Jones, car's not working. So I grab the car. I'm, I'm hot. I'm angry. I'm embarrassed because my friends are there. Like, you ain't got no money in the bank, bro. Okay, you broke. <laughs> so look, I, I grab this car. And literally, if you turn a car to the back, it says, call this 1-800 number to activate the car. <laughs> I had a car. I had money on it. But I couldn't use it because it wasn't activated. And I believe this, that God has put his word in you. And you can speak your word. But you can't walk out the word until you do it. And when you do the word, that's what is activated in your life. That's what is activated. And I just believe it that some of you, like, like some of you, like, are a victim of your situation. And God says, like, because of the word of God in you and because of the word of God coming out of your mouth, you no longer have to be a victim of your situation. You can do something about it. So James is telling these people, yeah, I know it's tough. I know the persecution is rough. Like, I know, it's, I know life is throwing you ups and downs. I know relationships have hurt you. I know people have gossiped about you. I know your reputation may be hurt. I know your dreams may be seen as blurred and as far away. I know it. But let me tell you this. You have the power to do something about it. Do something. So he's saying, don't just remain a victim. Don't just sit back and cry about your situation. Because you have the power of God in you, you're able to do something about it. And not only in our community. Like, so, so this past week, this is crazy, all this past week. I, so people know that I am a chaplain for Chesterfield County Police. And there's this video that went, like, viral all around the country. Um, all around the country about this Chesterfield County police officer snatching this African-American man out of this car, right? Snatching him. So we don't get the whole clip. I honestly don't know that what happened for the entire time. I don't know. So I'm hanging out with some friends of mine and uh, they're like, man, Travis, you got to do something about this, man. This is crazy, man. We're, I can't believe this is right here in Chesterfield County. Man, this cop snatching this black boy out of there, man, he's treating him, man, this is wrong, man. It's bad. Life is bad. And I look back at him and say, so what are we going to do about it? So literally, we got up, we went to the police station, not only do I have a badge, a chaplain badge, went to the back, and literally, we talked to that officer. You know what we did? Not only did we talk to him, we prayed with that officer. We laid hands on him, said, bro, I don't know, I'm not sure were you right or wrong in the situation, but I want to let you know there's a church called Motivation Church, we're going to be praying for you, bro. Because we want to do something about it, right? Like, I'm not going to just remain. Like, there's so many, especially injustice. Like, I'm talking about injustice next week because of scripture. Talking about favoritism or whatever. I'm talking about that next week. But there's so many conversations. I think because of social media, now we have a, a voice that's not really a voice. 
So we've been given power. So we become great talkers. And God says, like, stop becoming talkers and a victim of your situation. Stop talking about it and do something about it. And the reason why you can do something about it, because I have put my word in you. You have the power of God in your life. So you no longer have to remain a victim of any situation that you're facing. If you got brokenness in your life, you can speak God's healing verses over your life. If you got uncertain futures, you can speak God's future verses over your life. Like, it doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in, there is a verse for you to speak in it and for you to walk in it. Come on, somebody. Are you with me this morning? Would you stand with me? So I don't want you to become a victim anymore. No more victims in God's kingdom. There's no victims in God's kingdom because we can do something about it. Can you tap your neighbor and say, do something? Come on. Do something. Let's do something. But really, I do want to pray a blessing over your life. There might be somebody here today, and you have been a victim, and, and God is giving you the power to overcome because of the word of God. So this is why we are to be quick to listen, block out the voices, and hear God's voice, because it's God's voice that brings change in our lives. Man, I'm so excited for the word of God today. And uh, hey, I want, to, I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads in this moment. You might be here today, and you have never given your life to Jesus. Man, I want to I want to make sure that you make that choice today. There's a God who want to walk with you. There's a God who came down from heaven on earth, lived the life that you live, and he felt everything that you feel, every brokenness that you feel, every disappointment that you feel, he felt it, and he went to the grave with it, went to the cross with it, and then he came down and he rose again from the grave with the things that you're suffering from so that you can overcome. And that, that, if that you to hear today, I want to make sure I pray with you, and there's people outside uh, in a, a table called the Yes Table. There's a, a booklet there we're going to give you. We're going to make that choice to follow Jesus Christ today. We've got a Bible for you as well. I want you to start this walk with you. There's some of you today, you, you, you've been quick to listen to the voices of your head or the voices of others or the voices of our culture, and it has therefore paralyzed you from walking in the calling that God has for your life. And God says today, I want to heal you today from the from you being paralyzed and I want you to become per, a person who is quick to listen to God's words and we got some Bibles up here I mean you can download some Bible apps and some ways that you can start to hear God's words and not only do we want you to hear God's words we want you to start to speak God's words some of you didn't make that commitment today right now God I'm going to be someone who hears your word God I can't walk through life any longer without hearing your word I can't walk through this trials and tribulations without hearing your word. And some of you, some of you need to get busy. Some of you need to get in the game and stop allowing a voice that you can't do it or you're too broken or, oh, I'm in a wrong season. Like God says, okay, no matter what season you're in, he's called you to do something about it. He's called you to get involved in the game. He's called you to get involved in church. Start serving in church. Start being a blessing to people. Start serving your neighbors. Start serving your community. Start getting involved in things, making a difference in this world. I want you to do something about it. I want you to do something about it. Father, I pray over a blessing over every single person here today. Lord, I pray that you may touch them, Lord Jesus. Lord, help them to hear your word, God. Help them to walk in freedom, we pray, God. Lord, we love you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Come on, can we give God a hand of praise for his word today? Amen. Hey, I want to want to say guys that we're so blessed to have you all here hey, if you want to get involved in our church after our second service every Sunday we have something called Discover Grow Track that's where you can get involved and hear more about what's going on in our church and also one last announcement is that here in a few a few weeks we're having our She Night uh, that is a night where we are gathering all the ladies of our church and they're going to have a full worship service they're going to have a powerful word from God and it's going to be powerful. Could you put that on the screen real quick? To see, yeah, there we go. Uh, June 14th at 7 p.m. Mark your calendars. All the ladies, all the young ladies are going to be child care provided. It's going to be an amazing time. Guys, I need help babysitting kids in the back. Come on, come on. Somebody sign up with me. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. Uh, so make sure you mark your calendar. It's going to be an awesome time. We also got a, a, a kids VBS coming up pretty soon. I think the VBS we're going to highlight next week. I think it's on, it's like a nighttime PBS. It's going to be powerful for all the kids of our community. 
your kids, and uh, we pray it's a blessing to them. And man, we're excited what all God's doing in this church. Thank you all so much for all that you do. And man, we pray that you get plugged in, get involved at this church or local church. We're starting small groups pretty soon. In fact, this coming Monday, we're doing, uh, um, Tuesday, we're doing a small group leader training. If you want to be a part of that, just come see us. We'll love to sign you up to be a part of that small group leader training. And uh, man, I'm so blessed to, to walk through the book of James with you all. I pray that it's a blessing to you all. I pray you all have a great Memorial Day weekend. God bless you all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you would do us a favor and hit the subscribe button, that way you can get a notification every time we upload a video. Secondly, if you want to help us spread this message around the world even further, go to our giving page, go to Motivation Church slash give, and choose the option that best fits you. We love you guys. God bless.